Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, CSULB President Jane Connolly, as we continue our 24th anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a great show for you tonight. Our guest for the entire show is the president of California State University, Long Beach, Dr. Jane Connolly. President Connolly, welcome to our show. Well, thanks. I'm glad to be here, and congratulations on the 24 years. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's graduation time again, and I yes. know uh, it rolls around awfully quickly. It does. But yeah. it's an exciting time in the life of a university. It's the best, day, the best days. We have 10 ceremonies. We'll graduate over 10,000 students, and that's a record for us at uh, Cal State Long Beach. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And so many of our students are, and just for the record, I taught here for 39 years, I am now retired, just for the record. Uh, so many of our students are uh, first-time uh, college graduates, and, and, and yes. going here is a life-changing experience for both the graduate and the family. Uh, and that's a really good way to say it, because the individual changes our student, but that um, research shows and you know talking with family shows that it really changes the trajectory of the of our students family and then the community uh, in which they live so you know having a higher education institution like ours in our community i think is a great asset to the community to the community to the community and many of those students stay here and get jobs at uh, firms, public and private, that we have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And really, that's been one of our big goals in collaboration with Mayor Garcia, is to form denser partnerships with those firms and create internships and other apprentice types of opportunities, really to lure our students to stay in Long Beach, because they, they really add to the civic and the artistic and the economic development of the region. And just for the record, uh, Mayor Garcia was uh, 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 an, is an alum of Long Beach State, and he was AS president while he was here. That's right. So That's there's right. a very tight nexus. Yeah. And I heard from you or being quoted or somewhere that increasingly students are coming to Long Beach State not just because uh, of its great reputation, but because they hear good things about Long Beach. I think that's true, and uh, I should have finished an earlier sentence. We are an asset to Long Beach, but Long Beach is a great asset to us. They, it, do, they have, you know, being in Long Beach, this is a beautiful area of the country, and, you know, it's a beautiful it's, it's campus. Beautiful campus, and so it's a real lure. And we're the only Division I school that has beach in its name. And <laughs> all of that, all, all of, that, of that, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about enrollment. The word's getting out. We had 90,000 applicants last fall for only 6,000 places, so 84,000 letters had to go out saying sorry, mm -hmm. and many of them to students well qualified. Oh, absolutely well qualified, yes. So we, we do, we actually took about 4,000 freshmen and about 4,500 uh, transfer students, and you know, part of our Long Beach College Promise commitment is to really look at our, what we call Tier 1 area, so Long Beach Unified and the eight or nine districts, school districts that um, surround us. Really get a priority. Get, get a priority. Uh, uh, still, the, 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 the so-called minimum requirements are still really high. So, uh, and of course, in certain majors, um, the, um, the prereqs are such that they're not so easy to get into. But yeah, um, and the 90 plus thousand are just for the undergraduate program. If you added our graduate applications, it's over 100,000. Well, it, it, it's a shame because uh, we're denying uh, the opportunity to so many qualified students who, if they came here, uh, would get a useful degree that would make them productive citizens, yes. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's awfully short. And that gets back to state funding or mm -hmm. the lack thereof. That's exactly right. In fact, 
I'm glad you said that. We don't take, we don't use our number of applications and denials as a prestige factor. In fact, we always talk about it as what a shame this is, and how the state of California, in many ways, is are, is letting down its citizens. You know, the master plan was put into place in the '60s, uh, really with the promise that if you worked hard, you met the thresholds and the targets, you would be able to have an essentially free education from kindergarten all the way up through higher education. You know, very soon after the master plan went into effect, the, the funding was never really quite there. But, um, you know, there's some improvements. There's uh, more funding available to community colleges now. So, for example, Long Beach uh, City, you can get some free tuition going there. Everybody gets free tuition now. It, it expanded from the first semester to the entire year. That's it, fantastic. It's fantastic. And, you know, across the country, some are actually finding the money to put two years um, a free um, tuition at a community college. So families should really think about this. It would cut more than it would it would cut their expenses more sure. than half to um, to use the city college uh, as a gateway. And we have strong articulation agreements between us and Long Beach City and many other um, community colleges in our region. So students can get through, get their first sixty hours, and then come to us. And I know Long Beach State has uh, a reputation and a reality of graduating students with no debt. And those that have debt, it's just, a, I think, a third of the average debt for other public institutions. Yes. So we somehow find a way. Mm -hmm. Because to graduate as a student with a six-figure debt around your neck is a terrible way to enter the real world. It is a terrible way. And our debt is uh, average debt. As you said, more than half don't have, have no debt. But um, of those who do, it's about $13,000. And so... That is far below the average of California and even further below the uh, average of the United States. So we would say, I'm sure you join me, to our elected representatives at the state level, please consider higher education as a priority uh, uh, in your funding decisions because it, it, it comes back to benefit the state. You'll get uh, graduates who have skills that will pay taxes. Absolutely, and that's been proven over and over again that for every dollar you invest in education, you get between four and seven dollars back. So it's a it's better better interest than you get on most investments. And so this is really, um, you know, it's it's really builds the state. It builds the state it to does. invest in in education. And you know we have a lot of work to do at every segment of our educational system. Our, you know, we can see that zip code where you live predicts the quality of the school you have in many districts across the state of California. And that's just a shame that we yeah. can't offer an equal education no matter what your economic status is. And that follows that student. They're less prepared when they go to high school, less prepared when they come to us. They may be tops in their high school, but maybe they haven't gotten the, you know, the, the English, um, or haven't had access to sure. AP classes and higher levels of math. So investing in um, education may seem like a big mountain in the short run, but in the long run, the payback is tremendous. Tremendous. Okay. Thanks, Jake. We'll be back with more of our show after these messages. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives, we're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com, the Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks.
performance plus tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. We're back continuing our conversation with the president of California State University, Long Beach, Jane Connolly. Jane, we were talking about uh, cutback in state funding in the last segment. One of the ways that we uh, make good that whole, besides unfortunately raising tuition year after year, is fundraising. And you mm -hmm. just concluded a very successful $238 million That's right. fund. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, uh, well, you're right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would say just we have not raised tuition for four years, uh, so, and that was at the uh, command of the governor. So uh, tuition is much higher than it was in the 1990s, but it, there's been a freeze on it for a while. So private fundraising becomes even more important. Uh, so we did raise, we had a goal of 225 million, we raised 238 million, been able to launch over 200 new scholarships. Um, uh, so we're very excited about that. More than half of the money that we've raised is really organized to s directly support students. I think we have a couple hundred thousand living alumni. The school was yeah, founded 300,000. 300,000. Yeah. The school was, we called the 49ers because it was founded in 1949. That's so right, a yeah. bit of a stretch, but yeah. anyway. Yeah. But that's a great off-balance sheet asset to have 300,000 living alumni. and. We're increasingly getting to, and, and some of them are quite successful. Oh, actually. many of them, many of them. We just had an alumni banquet recently, and I was I was blown away by the accomplishments of our alums. Yeah, so you know, historically in the CSUs there was not much private fundraising. Right. Um, now we do have to organize ourselves and reach out. Fortunately, of the three hundred thousand alums that we have, many, many, a very high percentage actually live within a hundred miles. So we're going to be pushing out, you know, not just Long Beach. We've already had uh, receptions for people in the Bay Area and um, Washington, New York, Denver, Portland. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to work on our local people, but also our um, a little bit more far flung. And it's not, you know, certainly money, but it's not just money. It's like hire our grads, mentor our grads, you know, network them, you know, connect them to people. Uh, everything can help. And I guess we're reaching towards the... Uh the uh, SC model, the UCLA model, the Yale or Harvard model, mm -hmm. that if, if you go to a school and get the benefit of that education, uh, kind of pay it forward, mm -hmm. help out the next generation. Yeah, and that's, that's a real asset that, that adds value to a degree when you know that when you leave, you'll run into alums who will give you a second look maybe, or when they see you know, the school's name on a resume, they go, let, let me, let, let's uh, ask that person in. So that's, you know, I spent 10 years at Texas A&M and they are, Oh, yeah. uh, par Fanatic. excellence, the, yeah. the, 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 the Aggie network, and that's really my vision that we would have a beach network. Well, Long Beach State, in, uh, leadership is so important. I mean, I teach ethics and leadership as well as law, mm -hmm. and we've been so fortunate to have leaders of, of the ilk of uh, Dr. Robert Maxson, who started the President's Scholars yeah, Program, fabulous. and King Alexander, and now you. It, it, good leadership makes all the difference, whether it's a a university, a company, a country, or a culture, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it makes a huge difference. I think it does, and having the right team members make a big difference too, you know, getting the right people on board, and as Jim Collins says in his book, uh, get them on, the right people on the bus and get them in the right seats. Uh, so he's, that he, gets, he says what? Well, Jim Collins in his book, uh, From Good to Great or Built to Last, he says, get the right people on the bus, put them in the right seats, and then your organization really nice. goes. So That's really uh, true. Yeah. Well, one of the things I know you stress is inclusivity, if there is such a mm -hmm. word. I and think there is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. Well, there's a national movement called Inclusive Excellence, and we have one of the most diverse campuses in the country. And we have most of the more, more, one of the most diverse cities in, in the, the country, country, too. Exactly right. Uh, but, you know, diversity is not just based on your, your heritage, the color of your skin, your religion, or your politics. It's excellence in div diversity or inclusive excellence is that how do we use that diversity as an asset? 
And then, and how do we keep conversations going among people of different religions and politics and ethnic backgrounds that are civil and really lead to greater learning and compassion and empathy for the other? So we're doing many, many things now um, on campus to try to promote that among our students, but also have the faculty interact with students, have the staff have supervisors interact with staff. There's multiple levels of making sure that we make the most out of difference and not demand sameness. And uh, diversity, uh, I mean, it can create problems as with gangs and all that. We both are from New mm -hmm. York. We mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. also in California. But as you put out, it also can be a real strength. And one conversation on your point I had with Brian Gimolero, our, mm -hmm. our famous basketball, uh, uh, volleyball. volleyball coach, who. Uh, undefeated season with Misty May, 34 yeah. and zero way back at NCAA championship. But he said, and he has diversity on his teams, yes. and he views it as a strength, and it works as a strength, because each member, who, if, they, if they may be a, a member of some particular group, they take pride in that group, and, and they want to reflect well on it, and mm -hmm. that apparently gives strength to the team. Oh, yeah, and, and, and athletic teams are a great uh, metaphor, in a sense, for this, because not everybody's the shooter, not everybody's the one who, I don't know, the, I don't know right, all the positions, right. but baseball, you, they're not all pitchers, they're not all catchers. It's getting all those people doing their jobs and really appreciating the, di the different skills that, yeah. uh, that come, and some, some of those come from different ethnic heritages, and some just come from, it takes a lot of different knowledge and skills and dispositions. And what was the phrase you used, the strength of diversity? Yeah. Was, I usually say the excellence of diversity. The excellence of but diversity. But you have to work on that to make it happen. Otherwise, yeah. it's you know one group feeling like the other group got something I didn't get. You yeah, know, yeah. And so we have to build that among ourselves. We can see that in our world politics, right? We sure can. Yeah. Well, we'll be continuing with this fascinating conversation after we pause for these messages. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. Phone! Does anybody work here? Jeez. Satellite TV, what's the problem? I have a question about my bill. And since you merged with the phone company, I don't know who I'm supposed to call. Well, you should probably call the phone company. I did. They told me to call you. Please call them back and tell them that we told you to call them. They told me to tell me that. And told me to call you. Let me transfer you directly to the phone company then. It's wow. time to move on from satellite. For customer service without the runaround, get Spectrum. They transferred him back, sir. We're back continuing our conversation with Jane Connolly, president of The Beach. Jane, climate commitment is one of the values here, too. Yes. Um, uh, previous presidents had signed on to a commitment to reduce our carbon footprint uh, to be uh, carbon neutral, essentially, by 2030. And now we have upped our game by signing an additional commitment to uh, be working to mitigate the already, uh, what's already damaged us uh, through climate change. So, you know, one part of it is, you know, let's, what, what can we do to reduce the, um, uh, 
the, the emissions and the global change that's happening. And now this next part really is about resilience, because some things we'll, we will not be able to fix. And what are we going to do about that? And I know you're also sensitive to water consumption. And as a personal <laughs> member of the Board of Water Commissioners, yeah. we take delight in learning that, uh, that you're with the program. Yeah, yeah, we're saving millions of gallons a year by taking out lawns and going to low flow, you know, showers and toilets and many other. And of course, our students are fabulous um, uh, in their idealism and their energy. And we have faculty and staff involved. And we actually call our campus now the living lab. And so what can we do and what, can, where, what research can we do to find out how do we save water? How do we save energy. We're going to be installing many, many more solar panels soon, covering cars. So that'll be cool. Nice. Yeah. And apropos of commitment, I know you and a bunch of students, including my student assistant, uh, Megan Miller, went down to New Orleans. And uh, no, I, I'm not sure she was on that ship or not. But anyway, a bunch of students went down. Uh -huh. And, uh, and help rebuild the That's right. parts of the city that were wiped out by the hurricane. That's right. They work, uh, they've been doing it for a number of years now uh, under first leadership of Tim Carone and now um, I think Dennis Lopez uh, working for Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. And you know, they take a whole course around the politics and um, response to disaster just around New Orleans and then they go. Bingo. And they see it first half. Wonderful. Very life-changing for many of the students. Well, let's get up close and personal with you for a moment. Uh -huh. uh, you're from New York, as I am. Mm -hmm. And when did you come to California? We came in 2006. Oh, uh, recent arrival. Yeah, pre <laughs> pretty recent arrival. Yeah, we had, I'd, once I went to graduate school, I never went back to New York uh, to live. Uh, for Well, New, New York State. I went to Syracuse University for three years. Well, that's part of New York. That's part of New York. But my, you know, I'm married to a Texan, and he found the Syracuse <laughs> weather just a little bit um, You don't have to be from uh, Texas. Putting, yeah. That's, that's a good <laughs> but call. It, of course, that's a wonderful university. But we, yeah. we did a few stops in between, but we finally saw the light and came to California. Well, in preparation for this interview, I asked your office for your resume, and uh, you know, as an academic myself, I know how much effort it is to get one article published, and and it never stops. This resume, I mean, well, how's the time I, to do all this? <laughs> that was my job. <laughs> that was my job. Yeah, well, I've loved being a professor, and I've been a prof professor for a long time. So yeah. yeah. But it had great students, and you're always trying to launch their career. So, as you if you look at, as you look at my resume, most of my co-authors are my students, and so That's nice. they're all trying to you know move their careers forward. What a what a honor and privilege to to co-author anything with, with with the likes of you. Well, thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah. but you've also had administrative uh, experience as uh, chancellor of UC Riverside and. Uh, uh, Deans of various yeah, deans of various places, department chair, associate dean, yeah. I I took one step to be a department chair, thinking I would be back to being a professor in five years, and I never actually got back to being a full time professor. Really, I just started moving. Is that by choice or just it happened? And you know, you let yeah, it happen. And certainly by choice in one way, but you know, opportunities would emerge, and I and for the first few moves, I thought, well, I'll be going back to the faculty soon, but then I realized. I, I liked it. I, you know, I'm a psychologist. I like solving problems. I like being in relationships with people. So why not? It's funny. Uh, my, uh, our congressman, Alan Lowenthal, former yeah. city councilman, was a oh, professor so of psychology LG. here for almost 20 years. Yeah, I know him well. And I, I asked him, I said, Alan, what do you want to go to Congress? It's dysfunctional. And he said, Art, I'm a psychologist. I thrive on dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm leaning toward the uh, science of positive psychology, so I'm trying to get away from the dysfunction well, and trying yeah. to build strengths. Yeah. Yeah. Congress should hire you as a consultant <laughs> and see what can be done up there. Uh, I, ha uh, I have no, uh, I have no, no illusions about yeah. uh, my, uh, the influence there. They need bigger change than me. Well, what's the most satisfying thing that you've done, uh, or one of them? Uh, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's an unfair question. Yeah. but. Think of something that was deeply satisfying in your whole academic career that that you remember to this day. Well, you know, the, yeah, there are many in different roles, yeah. but um, you know, certainly, I ha as a psychologist and a researcher, I had an an ambition to publish in the American Psychologist, which is are the pre premier journal in psychology. And when yeah. I did that, I really, I really felt that bingo. Pat, pat myself on the yeah, back. Yeah. But, you know, especially in my administrative career, every time we'd be able to solve a problem or enhance a program or 
at Texas A&M, for example, the faculty, with my support, but it was the faculty, completely redid how teachers were prepared. I was dean of education there. Oh. And it made such a difference on the quality of the young novice teacher we could uh, develop. And I, I still look to that as, I, it wasn't my idea about how to do it, but at least I had the sense to support the people sure. who knew. Sure. And I think that's when I've had those experiences. Those are the most satisfying for me. And your husband, Kali, is a professor, yes, right? What yeah. does he teach? He's a psychologist as well. And psychologist? He's, yeah, he's still at UC Santa Barbara, and he's the director of the uh, Carol Ackerman uh, Positive Psychology Center, and uh, really is producing a next generation of really well-trained therapists and future uh, faculty members. Wow. Pretty two, exciting. Two, <laughs> two professors and two psychologists. Yeah, yeah. So think of our children. We have three children, all grown up now, but they would always tease us about their friends would say, you poor kids being raised by two psychologists. But, but I bet it turned out pretty well. I think it turned out really yeah. well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. Bill Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Bill is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Bill Trainees. They say there is a wondrous village, not far from here, as the dragon flies, where spectacle abounds, and everyone celebrates spring, like nowhere else in all the land. Renaissance Pleasure Fair, where fantasy rules. You've been planning this moment for a long time. It couldn't be a more perfect moment. And you have the perfect ring that will tell her, I want to love you forever. But nothing is perfect. Don't listen to that guy. He got the ring at McCarty's. McCarty's yes. makes a moment. I think we're very fortunate to have in our city a university of the quality of Long Beach State. Keeps getting better and better. And you heard her talk about a $238 million successful fundraising campaign, getting people to buy in. Our graduates are much sought. We had 90,000 applicants last year. I only could take 8,000. So everyone wants to come to the beach. And uh, also fortunate to have another fine leader in the likes of our guest Jane Connolly, following with Dr. King Alexander and Dr. Robert Baxton. So thanks for all you do on behalf of the students and the community. Well, thanks for that shout out. We really appreciate it. And, you know, we want to be uh, an asset to our Long Beach community. And I hope people will come and explore our athletics, our arts, our university museum is really, you know, on steroids now in terms of doing sure. great things. And, you know, throughout the campus, lectures and panels, Ali, you know, the Osher Lifelong Learning Center, the Fit Life Center. We want to be the place that the whole community feels invested in. And I was recently at the Jewels of the Night fundraiser oh, yeah. at the Pyramid. It was just a wonderful yeah, event, great, great yeah. energy. And yeah. uh, and I think raised $100,000 for our athletes. Wonderful. And all the money goes right to student athletic nice. scholarships. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jane, thanks for joining us. Sure. My pleasure. And again, 24 years anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you at home for being our guest. Please join us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press-Telegram, and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 at straighttalktv.com. Yeah.